איזה הוא מכובד המכבד את הבריות. Who is honored, one who honors, loves, and cares for other human beings. We gather here today to honor and mourn the life of Jane Todd Crawford Lipman, beloved wife of Earl, honored mother of Eric and John, and dear grandmother of Deborah, Meredith, Jonathan, Jennifer, Noah, and Samuel. We stand here today to honor a person who truly cared for other people and fought for them. And that brings me great honor to be here with you today as well. My name is Rabbi Marcus Rubenstein. I am the rab one of the rabbis here at Temple of Aaron. Um, and just honored to be with you today, whether you're joining us in person um, or on live stream as well, um, to honor the life of Jane. Let us start our service today with these time-honored words as the Jewish people respond to death with three words of blessing. In English, the words mean, praise is the judge of truth. Let us begin our service with the wisdom of our tradition. Please repeat these words of blessing after me. Baruch, Dayan, Emet. Praise is the judge of truth. God has given, God has taken. Praise be the name of God. To remember Jane, I really thought it would be appropriate more than ever to sing a couple of lines from Eshet Chayil, the famous chapter 31 of Proverbs, declaring what a righteous woman looks like. What a, and I want to say in a bigger role now, living in the 20th century, 21st century, what we are all should pursue. The values of taking care of our family and to work for others, to care for others, to make sure that others are respected, to have an other-oriented life, which certainly Jane did. So I'll sing a couple of words from Eishet Chayil and then translate. Eishet Chayil mi yimsa verachok mi pinim mi chrabatach bale bala vishalo lo yechsar gumal tu tov lo ra kol yemei hayeha karpa parsa la ani vayahadeha shil chalevion oz vahadar lavusha vatischak la yom acharon biha potcha bechokma vetorat chaser al shonatz vialichot beita what a precious find is an Ashid Chayel, a woman of valor, as these lines begin. One thing that Eric and I spoke about before this is that Jane was a woman of chutzpah, of strength, a person who really cared and stepped above and beyond um, for, for those and, and, and really um, went forward with whatever she was doing um, to fight to make the world a better place. And I think for that reason, as we as Jews have never called um, uh, the, the, the greatest woman a woman who is sweet or even just a beautiful woman. Um, but the lines, even from Proverb, are so powerful. Eshet Chayel literally means a, a, a strong woman. Chayel. Chayel means strength. And literally soldiers are called Chayalim um, because they're supposed to be strong. And so that's why Eshet Chayel is called Eshet Chayel. And these words I felt were very meaningful. Her worth is far beyond rubies. Her husband puts his confidence in her and lacks no good thing. She is good to him, never bad, all the days of her life. She opens her hand to the needy and extends her hand to the poor. She is clothed with strength and splendor. She looks to the future cheerfully. She opens her mouth with wisdom. Her tongue is guided by kindness. She oversees the activities of her household and never eats the bread of idleness. Her children come forward and bless her. Her husband praises her and says, Many women have done superbly, but you surpass them all. 
Charm is deceitful and beauty vain, but a God-revering woman is much to be praised. Extol her for the fruit of her hand, wherever people gather, her deeds bespeak her praise. I'm now going to chant Psalm 23, as is traditional. I'm going to chant it in Hebrew, and then I'll translate it into English. Mizmor le David, Adonai roi lo echsar, Bino de shear, Bitseini al mei menuchot in a haleni, Nafshi eshovev, Nafshi eshovev. Yan cheni b'mahag le'tzedek l'man shemo Gam ki eilech b'geitz al ma'avet Lo irara ki ata imadi Shivtecha Umi shantecha, shivtecha umi shantecha, hey mayana chamuni, taroch lefanai shulchan, taroch lefanai shulchan, taroch lefanai shulchan, neged sorerai. Di shanta b'shemen roshi, di shanta b'shemen roshi, di shanta b'shemen roshi, kosi revaya, ach tov, ach tov, echesed yir defuni. Kol yemei chayai v'shavti v'shavti b'veit Adonai v'shavti b'veit Adonai le'orech yamim. A psalm of David, a Lord, the Lord is my shepherd; I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in straight paths for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou hast anointed my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. At this point in time, we call upon Eric, our beloved son, to give some words of eulogy today. Thank you, Rabbi Marcus, for your kindness all throughout this process. Shiva is difficult, but uh, you've lightened our burden with all of your serial kindnesses. I'm grateful to you and and the entire uh, Temple of Aaron family. Certainly to all the people that are here, very grateful, and to those folks who are tuning in uh, on the internet in each time zone, thank you. My mother uh, uh, would delight in that, so I, I appreciate all of that. It is, as you can imagine, a very difficult enterprise for a son to eulogize his mother, uh, but in that respect, thankfully, uh, I'm no different than other Jewish sons throughout Jewish history. Quite mercifully, the tradition that I received from my mother and that she and I share tells us exactly what to do in a, in a difficult circumstance like this. It gives us an instruction manual. The book of Ecclesiastes tells us exactly how to attend a funeral when it notes, kol ha'adam v'chaye yaten el libo. At the end of one person's life, the mourners who survive are to Yeten el libo, to take to heart uh, the life and the example of you know, the family member who has departed, in this case, my mother. So we think about her, her life and her example and what she uh, tried to be during her life and take these things to heart. Uh, on a much happier day than today, 
when our extended family uh, had gathered to celebrate Kim's and my wedding, uh, my brother John, in his best man speech, classic best man speech, uh, observed that my mother's favorite word in the entire world was attitude. This, uh, of course, was true on two levels. Uh, John and I thought it was her very favorite word because she was so often using it with us, describing our attitudes as we were growing up and maybe how our attitudes uh, had fallen short in, in one respect or another. Yet it's also true that my mother believed at her core, with every sinew and fiber of her being, that one's attitude in this life was the key to success and to well-being. It, it operated like a special form of magic. One's attitude can give us, mere mortals, dominion over a very cruel world and allow us to scale even difficult setbacks, like this week, uh, and, and, and overcome them with ease, depending upon your attitude. It is, in fact, a mother's spell. She hoped that John and I would have healthy attitudes so we would be strong and that we would be kept safe from harm, which was uh, the wish throughout our lives. Attitude, she would remind us, began with an A. It was at the beginning of the dictionary, and as my mother believed, pretty much everything else in life. Attitude. This wonderful, smart, brassy woman died at uh, the conclusion of the holiday of Shavuos. And to my mind, that too is noteworthy. Every year on Shavuos, Jews across the world read the Book of Ruth. It's the story of the most famous convert in all of Jewish history. Ruth was the great grandmother of King David, who wrote Psalm 23, that the rabbi so beautifully sung and will be, it is said, a maternal ancestor of the Messiah. In the most dramatic moment in that book, the book of Ruth, Ruth, who then was a non-Jew, declares to her mother-in-law, do not urge me to leave you or to turn back and not follow you. For wherever you will go, I will go. Wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God, my God. My God. <laughs> I think about that and I say, my God. In that important moment, Ruth, who frankly was chock-a-block full of A attitude, inclined herself in an entirely new way and by her transformative choices, changed not only herself, her faith, all of the Jewish traditions that would follow, and, as I believe we'll see one day, all of humankind. An important choice. 66 years ago, in another important choice, my mother converted to Judaism, and she transformed herself, her life, her faith, and she signified all of these things by taking on the Hebrew name of Ruth. Ruth of old was an incredibly strong-willed woman who, in arguing with her mother-in-law in that famous passage, simply didn't take no for an answer. And that was my mother. <laughs> she did not take no for an answer. Both Ruths, the one of 1100 BC and the one that's still nearer to us, had a very strong sense of who they were, who they wanted to be with and around in this life, and what they were destined to become. And Shavuos has always meant a good deal to our family as Jews, notwithstanding the events of this week, which admittedly were pretty, pretty hard. It, it's always been my very favorite Jewish holiday. More than Hanukkah or Purim or Tu B'Shvat or all of them combined, I, I love Shavuos. I was bar mitzvahed on the day that, that led up to the holiday, and then in a double chai, 36 years to the day afterwards, I had the great privilege and high honor to read the, this week's Parsha, the next Parsha, the next portion in the Bible, not so, at the Wailing Wall in Jerusalem. So I have always been in, all in on, on Shavuos. And my mother loved all of the things that Shavuos features and emphasizes. Joyful celebrations with family, 
endless, endless supplies of cheesecake, a scholar's delight in books and important texts, and discussions with those whom you love most that simply ignore the clock on the wall and go very late in the evening. She loved all of those things. Indeed, uh, some years back, she was given the very high honor by her synagogue uh, back in Rochester, New York, to help inscribe a new Sefer Torah, a new Torah scroll uh, that uh, the synagogue had obtained. And she inscribed it, uh, uh, they were finishing off the last portion, she inscribed the letter Resh, the Hebrew letter for R. For Ruth, and I think for herself too. Indelibly and forever, my mother made her mark, especially on John and I. And so, if we mourners are to genuinely follow the admonition, yeten el libo, to take to our hearts, my mother's life and example, uh, I would say on, uh, on that point, remember the truths of the two Ruths. The two Ruths believed that you should love those who are closest to you energetically and unreservedly, and you should love them with an intensity that at first bewilders people, and then, frankly, mystifies them, and then changes the entire world. Oh, and uh, have a little cheesecake, too. She'd want that. She definitely would want that. May God comfort all of us amongst the mourners of Zion and Jerusalem, and please pray that we will all laugh and sing together in the world to come. What beautiful words. So, so meaningful. Really, and, and just beautiful Torah, too. So thank you so much. At this point in our time, in our time in our service, we're going to all rise for the Jewish memorial prayer. Traditional Jewish memorial prayer, El Malay Rachamim. I'll chant it in Hebrew, and then I'll translate it into English. El Malay Rachamim Shochein Bamramim Hamsei Minucha Nechona Tachat Kanfei Hashchina Bemalot Kiddushim Utorim Kizohar Rakia Mazirim Et nishmat rut bat Abraham vesara imenu shalcha leolama began eden te menuchada anna anna bal harachamim hasti reha vaseter konfecha leolamim utzror vetzor lachayim et nishmata Adonai hu nechalata v'tanuach b'shalom ha'mishkava v'nomar amein. El Malay Rachamim, exalted, compassionate God, grant infinite rest in your sheltering presence amongst the holy and pure to the soul of Jane Lipman, root but Avraham ben Sarah, Imenu, who has gone to our eternal home. Merciful one, we ask that our loved one find perfect peace in your eternal embrace, and may her soul be bound up in the bond of life, and may she rest in peace, and let us say amen. amen. El Shaddai, almighty God of the living and dead, said comfort to your children who grieve. Overcome by the pain of loss, they need your help to focus on the triumph and joy in Jane's life. Help them to meet grief with courage to face sorrow undaunted. Help them to treasure what is now theirs because Jane has lived. Should despair threaten or faith falter, sustain us all, Adonai, for you are our refuge and strength, our ever-present help in troubled times. And let us say, Amen. Amen. We continue with Mourner's Kaddish, which could be found on your handout in front of you. You can either read it in the original Aramaic and that those letters you can also have the transliteration there, and then, of course, you have the translation there as well. Uh, look at whichever one you feel comfortable with. Yit kadal v'yit kadash shmei raba b'alma divra chirute v'yamlich malchute b'chayechon u'v'yomechon u'chayeh d'chol beit Yisrael 
Bagala Wizman Kari Vimru Ame. Yehe Shame Rabba Varach Le Alam Al Meo Maya. Yit Barach Vishtabach Vitpaar Vitromam Vit Nase. Vit Hadar Vitale Vitalel Shame de Kurisha Brehu. Le Alam in Ko Virchata Vishirata. Tushbechata Venechamata. Dami Ran Belma Vimru Ame. Yehe Shlama Rabba Min Shamaya. Vechaim Aleinu Vel Kol Yisrael Vimru Ame. O say shalom bim romav, who ya say shalom, aleinu, be al kol Yisrael, bimru, amen. A, a meal of consolation has been provided by the Lippmann family here, right back in the, green, uh, the Greenberg uh, room, right behind you. You can take a seat uh, with the, after this final prayer. Vaishava efer ala arts kashayava tonuch veruch teshuv Elohim asher not na. The dust returns to earth as it was, but the spirit returns to God who gave it. May Jane's soul be bound up in the bond of life eternal. Send comfort, Adonai, to those who mourn. Grant strength to those whose burden is sorrow. And let us say, Amen. May her memory be a blessing. <laughs>